Looking into the clear blue sky, it seems, well, clear. But just because you don't see it, doesn't mean it's not there. Bits and pieces of broken down satellites and other orbital debris. What's an atmosphere to do? Rocket scientist Natalie Panic knows, and she joins us now for 10 questions on space junk. Welcome. Thank you. What is space junk? So space junk could be anything from an entire satellite that doesn't work anymore to bits of satellites from collisions to spent rocket bodies, basically man-made debris that's orbiting around the Earth. Why is it interesting to you? I think it's so cool that we rely and depend so heavily on satellites, but don't often think about what happens to a satellite at the end of its life or what causes all this debris and what we can be doing to mitigate it. What, how much junk is up there? Tons. So there's uh, a couple thousand satellites up in orbit now. There could be probably half a million pieces of debris like the size of a marble, mm -hmm. um, tens of thousands of pieces of debris the size of screwdrivers, and then millions the size of paint flex as examples. Are they all in the same orbit? Uh, it can be in different orbits. Uh, usually satellites are in low Earth orbit, which is about up to 2,000 kilometers, and that's where the space station is. Um, geostationary orbits, sun-synchronous orbits, polar orbits, there's lots of different... You can think of them as highways in the sky. Why is space junk a problem? Well, I mean, it's out there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's out there, but everything that we depend on in our daily lives and rely on for convenience are powered by satellites. So checking the weather, GPS, using your phone, eating food even, everything is powered by these amazing pieces of hardware that's orbiting around the Earth. And to meet our growing demand, our answer is to simply launch more satellites into orbit to replace ones that have broken down. So if you imagine our cars breaking down on highways, mm -hmm. we wouldn't just leave them in the middle of the highway. We would either tow them somewhere to get them fixed or move them out of the way temporarily. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen in outer space. Once a satellite dies, it just becomes space junk in orbit. They can't, no, you can't bring it down? There, well, there's no infrastructure in place right now to mm -hmm. do that. Um, some satellites deorbit over a certain number of years. Mm -hmm. So like 25 years, they'd end up deorbiting and burn up in the atmosphere. Um, there's ideas that you could send a robotic arm on some sort of space tow truck or orbital mechanical vehicle to gr grab onto a satellite and help accelerate its deorbit. Sounds like a Hollywood blockbuster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are there laws in place to limit the amount of junk? There aren't really laws per se. Um, there's guidelines in place. So the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs has guidelines for having satellites deorbit in under 25 years or moving a dead satellite into what's called a graveyard orbit, mm -hmm. which would be like moving a broken down car into a shoulder lane. But nothing that strictly says you're going to get a penalty if you don't clean up your debris or have your satellite deorbit. In. So there's no country or agency that's taking the lead on dealing with this problem? No. Oh, <laughs> so what are some of the options of uh, getting rid of the satellites, of disposing of them? So there's lots of cool things. For the really small pieces of debris, there's been ideas of using nets to kind of collect that for something the size of like a satellite the size of a school bus, for example, or a laundry machine, you could use these robotic arms mm -hmm. that would go up into space and do repairs on the satellite to make it workable again and, I guess, recycle it. Uh, there's technology that's being investigated, like using sails to help create drag on a satellite when it's dead and accelerate that, that deorbit. So you're just trying to slow it down so that it deorbits and burns up in the atmosphere faster. Oh, wow. Um, are there ways to motivate companies to be more environmentally conscious? That's a very tough question to answer. It's how do you trade off doing what's right and being accountable versus the choice of either making or losing money. So I often compare it to climbing Everest, where they've had seen an increasing amount of garbage, and now the government's taking action to say, well, you have to pay extra amount of money to climb, and then you get that money back if you bring down a certain quota of garbage. So maybe you could do something similar in space where in order to launch a satellite, you have to pay a fee, commit to cleaning up some amount of debris, and you would get that money back if you fulfill your Do you think also like uh, public um, awareness would help? Because I mean, it's in space, so we don't know about it. We don't really... Sure, we don't know about it, but everything we rely on is powered by it. So if you could imagine a life without satellites, it would be very different today. So. I think educating the public about it is very important and making people realize that it could be an issue down the road and maybe that'll encourage people to lobby or 
who care about the environment. Yeah. My final question, um, could we get to a point where entire regions of space that we count on could become unusable? Absolutely. There's something known as the Kessler syndrome, where a collision between satellites could cause a cascading amount of debris that triggers even more collisions. And then you could find yourself with an area of space that's just so saturated, you can't get past it to go explore beyond the Earth orbits, or you would be launching satellites into orbit that could extremely jeopardize your, your hardware, wouldn't be safe to launch them. So basically, we don't want to get to that point. Absolutely not. <laughs> Thank you, Natalie, for being here. Thank you. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.